So what is this little snowflake? Hmm? That one right there. Well, that little snowflake's different from pretty much anything else that's ever existed previously. Let's see why. We're not talking about just a system here, right? So if this is a system and I'm over here and I'm like, yay, school, right? And I need to get to courses in your school. So I go to, uh, you know, LMS dot whatever dot institution. Hey, we've all got them. We all pay a lot of money for them. Sweet. Well, that's not what we do with, with Elm's Land, right? So that is what you do, traditional LMS. But really, that leaves people like this. They go, oh, oh so sad, is what my son would say. And so you're so sad because you have this one thing, and it's the one way that everyone in the universe teaches. And as we all know, um, as you know, people that have worked with practitioners in education, um, everyone teaches and learns the exact same way, right? So, no, obviously it was being ironic there. Uh, so what Elms does, that's a little, little bit different, obviously, is um, we could take our snowflake, there we go, let's try to grab it, and blow it up and see that it's actually not a system, it's not a you know, little thing, it's almost, it's, it's this fractal. So we've got these petals to our snowflake, and each of the petals to the snowflake relates to one different aspect of the course, right? So imagine you take that one system that you had in one place, it made everybody sad. And what you did was that you expanded upon it and you said, hey, um, we know that the number one complaint with LMSs is, is that people want more domain specific applications. You can look it up. It's a real thing. So what if our you know, core of our LMS, if you will, was you know, kind of this boring, non-vibrant thing, but we actually re-architected the way that everything was structured so that that, you know, 87.2% in the statistic that I just pointed to out of thin air, uh, percent of you know people that want that, right? They want that uniqueness, that thing that makes their course theirs. What if we designed an architecture that was flexible enough to allow them to do that, to be creative, to still have a place that people that enjoy learning can go to, but that we funnel them out to other locations for all that awesome stuff, the stuff that makes you look like a superhero of a faculty member, right? A really good drawer, as you can see from these. Yeah! And I'm awesome because of this technology. And that's, you know, yeah, right. Teaching isn't all about technology, obviously. But if, I, if my email client was garbage, then I'm gonna think all email is garbage, right? The same is true for these systems. If these little pedals are garbage, and the core of that product is garbage, then everyone's gonna think my course is garbage, right? It might be click two links instead of click one link. It might be this link is dead, all right? There's a certain threshold of acceptability of use of technology that's just not there <laughs> from you know the 90s. So let's say that I am an educator and I've got my course, I wanna teach this awesome new way, all right? I've got my cool hat on. And so, but I don't wanna teach the same way everyone else does. So what we can do is uh, we basically take that snowflake who over there, right? And then another educator comes along and they teach in their own little unique way and everybody teaches their own unique way. Now, the interesting thing though, is we're all following the same pattern. So if we've got the same interaction patterns, then students that are over in this course or students in this course or students in this course, they might not actually realize that they're utilizing different systems. And by might not actually, I mean they don't. Right, so if we stick all of these things in an extremely similar user experience pattern, they're not gonna notice that the you know, domains hop around. So you know, this goes from a like thing dot whatever dot com to like thing two or three or four, right? You, know, you tell people to go use uh, Yammer as an example if your institution adopts Yammer. And no one goes, oh, you know, I just don't really want to go to Yammer because it lives at yammer.myinstitution, right? They don't want to go to it because it's Yammer and it's terrible and it's not meant for education, but yet we're all adopting it for some reason. So what we're doing is basically leveraging kind of a Google uh, paradigm as far as the way in which they structure and roll out systems. And so what happens when you do that, right, 
is that if you imagine that uh, you know YouTube exists, right? YouTube might be one of those pedals in the Google universe, if this was a Google universe, right? This pedal might be Google Docs, and this pedal might be um, uh, sites.google.com, which the new one is pretty awesome. So, what, you know, I'm not saying we're Google, but right, if you were to structure your applications as an organization, you would do it in this way, right? You would put new things that are completely disconnected from one another at new locations, right? So this would be your YouTube, and this would be my document management system, and this would be my content management system, and this would be my CRM, right? Because you're, you're going to buy all these different products and stitch them together or whatever anyway. Um, so why don't we do this for educational tools? Well, right now, what's been happening quite a bit is that you've got uh, these systems that exist, right? And so we'll call them learning management systems. But if this was a learning management system paradigm, um, I would zoom way in. And I would just have the center, right? And so I've got this big center, but I do actually have these things that branch off from the big center, right? And we'll call this um, LTI. And so people are really big on LTI in education right now to form uh, their perception of what is an NGDLE or next generation digital learning environment, which is effectively, you know, there is a video portal over here somewhere and I've got to get students to it in such and such a way that they you know, don't know that they left, but they also get to watch that video. And so what LTI does is, is passing along you know, knowledge of who I am, of what I'm studying currently, and um, you know, where I was type of a deal, right? So it's like who they are and what their role is. And so it's doing that on demand to, in this case, we'll say like vid one provider. And so it's playing their video so that they can watch their video of the sunrise because we couldn't get that from any stock footage website. And so they're watching the sunrise, but they're doing it in this iframe. Uh, and so the iframe is allowing them to not have a break in their UX pattern. Uh, there's not a lot of cognitive load with this, but um, that isn't really next generation, right? It's, it's still, we've got everything in this one place and we're just, daisy chaining iframes at a technical level. And unfortunately, you know, basically like this, right? Students still going through a pretty cruddy experience from the nineties. They're clicking page one, page two, page three, and there just happens to be this iframed content. Oh my gosh, so engaging iframes. And then another iframe content, oh my goodness, so engaging. And so it's not engaging is, is what the snark is about, right? That's not the point of next gen. Next gen is not just daisy chain a bunch of crap together and say that it's something new, right? Okay. So what next gen is, and I'm not suggesting it is only this system, but it is much more about a system and a network of solutions that can do things. Okay. So next gen, another principle of next gen, not just that it's multiple things, right? It's that those things talk to each other using standards. And so whether those standards are LTI, or whether those standards are web service and restful technology, just that no matter where I am, I can keep in context who I am because the systems talk to each other. And so one key area that no LTI tools in any LMS currently do that Elms Learning Network, the visual that you're looking at, which is our, our logo, is that these things can talk to each other. There are not LTI tools that are designed this way because LTI, as we just said, is a single place and everything goes back to me and everything goes out to that little thing. And then that's it. That's all the relationship is, is just that type of a street. And, you know, again, typically it's just kind of like one little page in the interaction that I'm now paying thousands of dollars to 20 different vendors for. So what Elm's Learning Network is, is that we've taken this paradigm of almost kind of like a small core. So like if this is your LMS and it's this really big uh, core, people are already kind of hollowing out little pieces of it. And this might be like, well, you know, our vial systems back end is box or something. Um, so what we're doing with Elms Learning Network is saying, okay, well, our core is just a management system. It's just what courses do we have on record? Now from that core, we can go and invoke and set up, uh, let's say an art, uh, an art course. And that art course is going to have content. Okay. And then maybe, right, we've either developed or I mean, we have, but so let's say we've developed something really new and fun and cool to having more engaging experience than a bunch of outline of stuff. And so we're, we actually call that studio. And so studio exists in Elms Learning Network. And so our art students 
uh, don't know that this other thing is here, right? This thing that's management, that's back facing, that helps us make the universe exist for them. Uh, it's you know brokering those those web service connections, LTI. It's implementing the standards. Uh, but what students are experiencing is they're experiencing content in something that wasn't produced in the '90s, and then they're experiencing a studio and environment and engagement. Uh, where, you know, maybe I'm posting images between each other and we're commenting on each other's work and giving each other feedback and we're collaboratively learning. Well, that's a different type of a space and engagement. That's also not something you're going to get via that one little noodly LTI connection, right? Because that LTI connection is great for iframing in your one video, but it's not going to be a whole experience. It's not going to change your worldview. And so because we're building out in this paradigm, when new awesome idea two comes out maybe we'll call it studio next we are now architecturally positioned to build studio next and hook it into our course content and hook it into our management systems why because we've already designed around the fact that we're a series of tools that are going to power the experience it's for this reason that we can then pull in our media system because we have one, right? But it's it doesn't, you know, the, the architecture doesn't suppose that we are the broker of truth for all media, right? So we could plug into, you know, YouTube or a Kaltura or some other backend for our media very easily because our methodology is such that we're always leveraging other things, right? And a lot of those things do come from us and we provide kind of the, the lightweight option in a lot of times, but it also allows us to innovate in place. And so one of the phrases we like to throw around with Helms Learning Network is this concept of sustainable innovation. So because of this styling, I could take my brand new snowflake here and I can say, okay, well, this is a, this is a math course, right? And the math course has similar UX patterns. Um, you know, it's got kind of your doodle it over here. Um, similar UX patterns. So, you know, I might have like a top bar of material. I might have a place that has a bunch of links to go to. It says math. So I know I'm learning math. And then, you know, there's a bunch of content, right? And that means that I'm on this link, which that link is relating to this pedal in the snowflake, which is content, right? But if math has some really cool interactive equation editor, right? Which actually is something you probably do in the studio, right? The studio would be there. Well, math studio is a separate snowflake from that art studio that I put together before. And so what we're able to do is have courses with unique experiences crafted to their individual needs, which is the thing everybody keeps saying they want and need to teach effectively. But we're doing it in such a way that that innovation and that really cool thing still hooks into the rest of the universe and is still built against the same pattern. So not only can we spin up, you know, multiple studios that basically function all the same, we can diverge from those because that's where innovation comes from. Innovation is not doing what the rest of the pack is doing. Innovation is diverging from the norm. It's pulling in things from outside of our worldview and outside of what makes us comfortable and then building upon them and integrating them and ingesting them. And so now as these systems build out, right, maybe we go, well, Studio is great for, you know, students to collaborate and post images to each other. Um, but it's not really good for just large, you know, meaty discussions of text. And so maybe we have like an English course and the English course is going to need something that's much more, you know, a faculty member posts their one uh, image or, or you know, media asset, whatever it is. And then all the students in the class discuss that media asset, right? So that's a more traditional discussion forum. Well, using this methodology, we can kind of just take out one of those snowflakes that we're going to set up. And then we start working on this new system. We call this discuss. And so again, discuss ropes back in there. We can have studio for people to uh, collaborate with one another. We can have traditional boring old content. We can have the media back end for people to actually, you know, engage with the material. Uh, from an analytics perspective, this also works. So if you're familiar with uh, XAPI or uh, Caliper, you know, for, as far as learning analytics and sending it places, we could have uh, an XAPI collection endpoint. And so none of the systems 
that we engineer are going to collect data on their own. They're going to emit data and everybody's going to wrap it around to this other place. This is another issue that this is solving that currently exists with the LTI based approach to systems design is that you've got all the data in your LMS or you've got it in that one little provider and you don't have it anywhere else. Nobody else can access that data. That is not gonna happen. And so I hope it illustrated effectively why, uh, you know, why we feel this approach is so powerful. Um, there's you know, lots of different courses running this now. We, we've been rolling this out at Penn State into uh, hundreds of courses uh, across Eberly College of Science and College of Arts and Architecture. And, and there's a handful in, uh, in our business school and, um, and elsewhere. Uh, there's also a group outside of the United States in, in the UK uh, that's using this to power hundreds of courses of their own. Uh, they're actually using it from a training perspective. But so this is an approach that you know, isn't about day one having all the pieces. It's a, it's a mindset so that we can build the, all the things that we actually need uh, and do so in a way that we're always improving upon those individual pedals and rolling it out to everybody else and that those pedals can always talk to everybody else because all of us are these unique beings, we are these unique courses, and we have unique content, and we need a unique methodology in order to handle that.